Okay, any other comments from the members? Dave? Uh, thank you, Chair. I also uh, visited the site. And one thing I did notice was the comment that was made in the, uh, there was a large tree that was only put down on the boundary right next to the sandstone wall. But again, if you look at the topography of that particular area, most of this development from the, the roadside, up to now, the roadside, is, is below the wall level. So it'd be very limited amount sticking with the wall on the roadside. Maybe it's already stated that the wall opposite is quite high elevated and you can see the property from that area. So you have to look at the topography as well as anything else. Um, it does look a cramped site. I thought that one was there on the day. I did ask, was there enough community space given the size of development on that particular site? And I was told it was acceptable. Yeah. I'm interested in what David's got to say. Do we have any other comments before David moves recusal? Okay, David. Yes, sir. thank you, Chair. Um, I, uh, my reason for you would be that the dwelling in this location would create a cramped form of development which will result in a detrimental change in the character of the area and is therefore contrary to the provisions of the National Planning Policy Framework and the Unity Development Plan Policy HS4 criteria for new housing development. In other words, it's too big on too small a size. Okay, so Councillor Alderson has moved refusal. Do we have a seconder? Thank you. All those in support of rejecting the application? All those against? The officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. Do you have an approval? Seconder? Second. Thank you, Chair. All those in favour of approval? Against? That's carried. Thank you. If we can move to agenda item 7, which is pages 41 to 50, can we have a presentation please? Thank you, Chair. Um, this application is before the committee as it was taken out of delegation by Councillor Watt. The application is for the remodeling and extension of an existing house including a detached garage. The existing house um, was approved in 2006 and this proposal remodeled the elevations with a more contemporary appearance, larger areas of glazing, <coughs> um, it includes extensions to each side. So to the um, west side there is a two-storey extension, to the east side there is a single-storey swimming pool extension proposed. The detached garage is located to the north of the house in front of the dwelling itself. Uh, the site is a residential site within the Colby Conservation Area. The existing building is identified by the Conservation Area appraisal as a Category C building. That means it probably makes a neutral contribution to the Conservation Area uh, development that improves its appearance and therefore the Conservation Area will be supported. Uh, this part of Colby consists of large properties set into large wooded plots that slope quite deep, steeply down from King's Drive at this point. Uh, at the application site itself, at the moment, you, you can't really see you know, how views of the house that's there because of the boundary treatment and the, the screening from landscaping. Um, it's not really visible except to adjacent properties that are on either side of the site. The eastern extension projects no further forward, or no further towards the side of the property to the east of the property. Um, but it, it steps back from the, the main elevation of the property and is a swimming pool single story extension. Um, it has large closed windows, and one of the reasons for objection is concerns from the Barley House that there will be loss of privacy and overlooking because of this large glazed frontage. Um, it is a single story extension, so where people can stand and, and look into the adjacent property is limited by that fact. And there is an existing first floor window on that elevation in a similar position. So our view is that there's no greater loss of privacy than that exists at the moment. Um, the two 
two-story extension on the outside of the house, on the west side of the house. Um, it has windows that face sideways, adjacent property, but these are obscurely placed, and again, there's no greater impact on privacy. Um, the proposed garage, which is to be situated in front of the building, further up the site, it's because of the slope, it's so steep, it slopes virtually three metres from where the garage is one end of it to the other. So it's proposed that the garage is set into the slope um, and the land is mounted around it and landscape. So it effectively has a green roof, so you don't see it effectively. Um, there would be a number of trees lost within the site as a result of the development. Some because of the development, some because of the condition of the trees. But <coughs> there's an equivalent number of trees to be replanted, that's eight trees to be replanted on the eastern boundary, which will also add to privacy and screening of the site. Um, it's felt that the changes are improvement to the building that's there. It's better for modern transports already there. The materials are not as sympathetic to the surrounding area, and there's quite a diverse range of houses in the area, so it's not an old term that's there. Um, on that basis, it is recommended for approval. Thank you. Is there a board council for the I'm wondering if it might be beneficial to have some kind of fan put on the screen to show what it is you're actually talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Chair. So, of course, I've got there. Um, want to be fairly brief on this. I mean, the, the, the objection is from the immediate neighbour, Barley House, to the um, to the east of, of the site, the swimming pool side. Um, and um, I asked to be taken out a delegation, and I quoted um, HS11, CH2, CH11, the development plan, as well as the um, Courtney Conservation Area Federal Management Plan. Now, all the points that have been made have been pretty well knocked down one by one in the report, but I was just rather surprised that in relation to the Courtney um, uh, Appraisal and Management Plan, there's three paragraphs quoted in the middle of page 43, which is the rather nice description of what Courtney Village is like at the moment, but there's no actual reference to what the management plan says, and the management plan that I couldn't locate it on the internet, and I've lost my role from in my recollection, um, <coughs> refers to um, sizes of houses not to be vastly increased over what they were, and also that they should respect the relationship uh, with properties in the neighbouring and neighbouring plots. So you can see why the um, neighbours are a bit bothered by the swimming pool, um, which is quite a large thing, the long side wall on their side of the plot. Um, so that is largely the, the I think the reason for um, for rejection, um, as well as lots of trees, which I, I suppose are to large extent covered all the all the conditions. Um, but um, you know, bearing in mind um, obviously the clear um, displeasure of the neighbours and that they may well be um, entitled to those views in view of the uh, the management plan. 
um, I would ask you to refuse this application and let the uh, applicants begin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Can I open this up to the committee, please? Thank you. Thank you. Dave? I don't want to be political, but I will be. Um, the legislation in Panama has changed dramatically over the last six months, and a lot of extensions, which we wouldn't normally allow, are now acceptable under new government guidance. But I find it very, very hard. And even the Ward Council himself in his presentation said, every reasoned argument he had was not held by all the comments in the report. I find it very hard to refuse this application. Any other comments? Um, I share Dave Mitchell's concern, and I also share my Ward Councillor colleague's concerns. I really, I was going to try and move refusal, whether it's going to be supported or not, I don't know. But basically, on the grounds as set out in Councillor Geoffrey Watt's reason for referral, which is on the top of page 43, um, in terms of the fact that the proposed development, by reason of its size and scale, represents overdevelopment of the site. David, just, well, just, be, just before you move, refuse, can I just check that there's nobody else who wants to make a Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you... I thought no, everybody just, just give me one second to just check that. Anybody else want to make any comments? No. Sorry, sorry students, we'll carry on. No, no problem. No problem. I'll start again. Um, the proposed development, by reason of its size and scale, represents overdevelopment of the site and is likely to affect the privacy of neighbours Contrary to policies HS11, CH2, and CH11 of the Rural Unitary Development Plan, the Codic Conservation Area Appraisal, and the Management Plan and the National Planning Policy Framework. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Councillor Alderton's moved refusal. Do we have a seconder? Thank you. Councillor Alderton, you Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> okay, um, so we've had a move in a second. Uh, all those in favour of refusal? Against? Okay, the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. All those in favour of approval? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Can I have a move for that, please? Thank you, Steve. Second done. Thank you, Trina. All those in favour? Against? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. If we can now move to agenda item 80 pages 51 to 56. Presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. This application is a departure from the new federal plan designation and under the current scheme of delegation is required to be determined by the planning committee. The applications for the erection of the terrace of three houses on a brownfield site adjacent to the existing row of terraced houses. The site's designated is for primary industrial use, the majority of the site is surrounded by commercial development with the exception of the terraced houses to the west. Um, the site has to, because of its designation, the site has to be assessed against UDP policy EM8, which allows commercial or industrial development in such areas. However, policy CS17 of the National Planning Policy Framework includes provision for alternative uses where the site is not suitable for its designation and has been marketed for employment uses without interest, and that the proposals are compatible with the character of the area. <coughs> the scheme to be marketed for 12 months without any interest, and the site is located at the end of the road terraced houses and the development of these proposed dwellings will logically follow that row. A previous application was granted in 1996 for three identical dwellings and historic maps do show that the site originally did accommodate three houses. It's considered that while this development is departure, there are material considerations that work in favour of the scheme as outlined and for these reasons the proposal is considered to be acceptable and recommended approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Is there more council would like to speak on this? No? Can I get this up to committee? Steve? Chair, yeah, it's uh, an area obviously that well known to people that from, from that neck of the woods and it does does it not contrast with the last application which we have to take into consideration where we are talking about you know, people's privacy and uh, distances of you know, 
the size of them, they're far between them. Uh, and we have an application here for three terrace houses. Um, it is a very untidy site. It is often prone to fly tipping. Um, it is one of those strange areas where it's old usage, the old terrace houses have remained, and over time it's gradually been taken over by uh, semi-industrial, but uh, I, I would support any application that tries to tidy that site up, and I think that's the, the motive behind it. It might simply be, the motive may be just to increase the price of the plot, um, but anything that tries to tidy that site up should be recommended, I believe. <coughs> Kathy, uh, through you, Chair. Um, I also um, inhabit that area because I work at 33 Old Bidston Road and uh, next to our offices there uh, are terraced houses. But going back to Steve's <coughs> comment about um, previous properties in Kesper, it's all a question of in keeping, isn't it? If you were to put a, a, a large detached house in that area, it would be out of keeping. But three terraced houses there, I think, are perfectly adequate. And I would recommend uh, approval. Yeah, I should have been a job for you last Okay, <laughs> okay um, we, um, if, if, not, uh, if there are no other comments, Kathy's moved for approval. I'll yes, <laughs> Seconded by Joe. So all those in favour of approval, subject to the conditions listed. That's yeah. unanimous, that's carried. Thank well, you. <laughs> Okay, agenda item nine is a site visit to terms deferred to uh, the seminar committee. Eleven is a site visit to us, a site visit, so we're on to agenda item 13. Swiftly moving on. Uh, so it's pages 85 to 92, if we could have a presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this site of Lydiot. It's allocated for residential use within the Lower Hesville Conservation Area. It's currently open land which is bordered by the Lydiot to the west, which has a substantial mature hedge along that boundary, um, and houses and gardens to the, to the other boundaries of the site. The proposal is for two detached houses, they're two storey with an extra room in the roof. They have detached garages um, which are joined to the houses by an enclosed yard, and the properties mirror each other in terms of the, the footprint. The houses are to be located at the northern end of the site, adjacent to the existing cluster of buildings. The front of the properties would face north, with the rear elevation of the gardens uh, extending down to the south of the site. Given this position, much of the land would remain as, as visible and open as it is now. Um, if members were minded to approve the application, there are two conditions suggested which would remove community development rights to allow control over any buildings that, that could happen in that area. Um, Residential development within the conservation area is acceptable where it makes a positive contribution to the character of the conservation area and does an impact adversely on the amenity of the residents around the site. The houses themselves have a fairly simple modern design. They're mainly rendered, like many of the buildings surrounding the site, but with other detailing through timber cladding and zinc cladding. The slate roofs are proposed, again, in keeping with properties around the site. The interface distances between existing properties that are to the north, east and south boundaries of the site uh, meet the council's required distances, so they're satisfactory in that respect. There are a number of trees around the site uh, which are protected by virtue of being in a conservation area. It's proposed to remove four trees. This isn't to facilitate the development, this is just to do with the, the condition of the trees. So two are at the bottom of the site where it narrows and two at the top of the site. It's proposed to replace those trees that are lost with four other trees that were an appropriate species to this location. Um, in addition, the hedge that's on the video that's an important feature of the site is to be retained and supplemented with extra planting to ensure it's, it's robust. Um, it's considered the proposals make a positive contribution to the conservation area. They won't result in a loss of amenity to any of the surrounding properties and they are recommended for approval. Um, if members were minded to approve it, there is a condition which doesn't appear on your late list because it's a very, very late late one, which basically um, would require obscure glazing to the side elevations of the properties. This is already proposed on the plans, but the condition would ensure that that has to take place if the application were approved. Um, there is a qualified petition for this application as well, Chair. Thank you. Is there any petitioner here who would like to come forward? No, is there a ward councillor that would like to speak on this? 
subsided a bit in, I think, in fact, the um, objectives have sent pictures to the members of the committee. Um, and with, with, with curtains, which could be removed, so it was at that extent see through, although it facilitated the looking backwards. Now, um, that the, the rear view has been effectively broadened up. So there's no rear view into the neighbour's garden, but it now becomes a much more solid and visually intrusive um, structure. Um, so I don't think there's any kind of thing that's really been gained by this. And, and um, with a, a slight um, variation of the words, um, I would ask you to carry on with your previous view and refuse it again. Um, and uh, I would say it's uh, already constructed and slightly close to the common boundary which permission has already been refused, and such a scale and height is to be overbearing and is an intrusive and unneighbourly form of development, unacceptably impacting on the residential unity, all contrary of the neighbours, all contrary to policy HS11 the World Unitary Development Plan. And just as an afterthought, um, the neighbours have pointed out a, a well respected authority on planning matters, that Martin Goddard has stated in strictly legal terms there is no right to review, which is what we're always told. But this does not mean that the loss of the view is necessarily irrelevant to planning. The enjoyment of the view would be an important part of the residential amenity of the neighbouring property, and its loss, therefore, have an adverse impact on the residential community of that property. Thank you very much, Chairman members. Thank you, Jackie. Can I open the subcommittee, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank been closely involved in this development in the sense that I've seen it, I haven't commented, I haven't discussed it with either of the applicants or the objectors. But really what's happened is by putting the fence up and by boarding it in, it is even more visually intrusive than it was to begin with. And the fact that the neighbour of number four has lost the view is a material consideration as far as he's concerned, but it's not a material consideration from a planning perspective. All I'm concerned about is that what's happened, the fence doesn't need planning permission, as we know, the fact that it's been boarded in at the back rather than being able to see through it so that it doesn't actually overlook his garden actually makes it more visually intrusive because it is so close to his fence line of number between four and two. So I have an awful lot of sympathy with the comments that uh, my old colleague makes over this and I would be prepared to remove refusal for the reason that it's said and whether I get support for it remains to be seen. But I do believe this poor neighbour it could be involved in a neighbour dispute, which we do not get involved in, I'm well aware of that. But the situation is that the, situ the actual um, development as it exists at the moment is virtually more intrusive on the neighbour's amenity value than was the previous development which we uh, originally refused. So, to sum up, unless anybody else wants to speak, Chairman. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I think we've seen this application and we've um, seen the photographs. Um, it, it, is, it is one of those um, beauty is often in the, the eye of the beholder. Do, would, would you expect in a fairly large garden to see that type of structure? Well, in certain, yes, certain circumstances, you may well expect a golden stroke pavilion, describe it uh, as you wish. Uh, would I like it to suddenly appear in the garden next to me? Probably not. Um, but in, in planning terms, I, I, think, I think we would be on on fair, fairly shaky ground. I don't like the idea that it's been built without permission. We, we, we do take a, a rather good view of that. Um, but it, when I hear the reasons for refusal, I'm, I'm very much um, open minded as, as, as we go to the vote. Any other comments? David, nice to you. Thank you for your comments, those are appreciated. Really, it just sums up what uh, my council my colleague has put on the page. 99 at the top, where he says that uh, the, the pavilion constructed a slightly close to the common boundary on public permission has already been refused, is of such a scale and height as to be overbearing as an in, and is an intrusive and unneighbourly form of development, unacceptably impacting on the residential amenity, particularly number four, all in contrary to policy HS11 of Wirral's adopted unitary development plan. I would like to move that because I don't believe much has changed. In fact, I think it's actually got worse than it was. Councillor Alderson has moved refusal. Do we have a second one? Thank you, Cathy. All those in favour of refusal? Okay. 
against. So that's carried. That's carried because you don't get passed as the substantial as six months of the year. Sorry, my objection to review is that. Okay, we can go to the substantive motion. All those in favour of approval? <laughs> approval to the amendment. <laughs> approval of the amendment. Right. My name is Martin Hubbard. 
and I am a very close neighbour to this proposal. Uh, I have uh, presented a petition previously to the, the, the original proposal uh, and I've now taken a second petition. I was refused entrance to Barncroft to, to petition the residents in Barncroft, but regardless, we've still got 109 signatures without those residents. Those residents do approve of the petition, but uh, they are proud and told what they should think. Uh, now, I object to the application on the ground that the Habitat Survey concluded that a further survey should be taken with three surveyors and at a time suitable for the survey between dawn and dusk. Several times in the survey they say that places were inaccessible without better equipment. The attenuation chamber is only for storm water and no provision has been made for additional foul water disposal into already overstressed drains. We were originally told that the attenuation chamber would help to cope with additional sewerage, but this has now been refuted. Last summer, 2014, United Utilities embarked upon a venture to renew collapsed sewers in Kentmere Drive. But after bursting the water main three times, they decided to defer the work because the schools were going back. They put a temporary lining inside the sewer and reinstated the road. This is downstream from the proposed building and there are no plans at present to continue this remedial work. No consideration is given to elderly, sick, vulnerable residents who would have to tolerate dust, noise and disruption for up to two years. I and a great many of the local residents look upon this area rather like the poor man's baby retirement home. I don't know whether any of you watched Waiting for God. Uh, very amusing. Stephanie Cole, lover. Uh, we know that the only way out is in a pine box. Now, whilst this is an acceptable situation at present, it would become intolerable if it became an industrial landscape. <coughs> Inadequate consideration has been given to Pensby Hall, although it has been modified. A grade two listed building, which would be exposed to an unsightly two-storey structure to the north. The elderly incumbents of Pensby Hall have been told that there is no alternative and that the proposal will go ahead, regardless of their protestations. The applicable minimum distance for a new build is from any structure within the curtilage of the property, including all and any outbuildings built before 1948. There is a small outbuilding uh, that belongs to Pendleby Hall, which is, as you can see on the plan, quite close to the, the proposed line. Okay, you just have one minute there. Okay. Uh, the proposal states that there will be easy pedestrian access to shops and public transport. This is eminently untrue, as it is at the top of a very steep hill, unsuited to elderly or infirm. Also, the road is very narrow and unfit for two-way traffic. The nearest shop is three quarters of a mile away. The same applies to the nearest post box. The original plan showed parking spaces for 21 cars, but the revised plan, reduced to 11, is uh, definitely under what, what should be for, for the area. The tree book survey added a caveat that they are unaware if there is a tree preservation order in force and that their survey would be invalid if it were so. On an unannounced visit to Barncroft, 
Oh, the 11th of February of this year. Can I just ask you to wrap up now because we, we are at the end of your time? Well, I, I virtually finished. We do the last five minutes, so I'm going to have to ask you to finish your presentation now. Okay, fine. Is there, is there a key point that you want to make at the end of that? Uh, only about the, the bat roosts, which are in the trees in Farncraft. Okay. I do have video footage of them, uh, which you're perfectly at liberty to hear. Right. I did offer it to... to okay, uh, I'm going to have to stop you there, but it would be about the bats. Thank you very yes, much. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to cut you short, but okay. we do have rules we can stick back. <clears throat> Is the Asian Tully representative here to speak? Thank you. Again, if I can ask you to state your name and you have the same permission yes. of five minutes to speak. from Upsani Architects uh, with the agents. Um, it's a pre-prepared statement, uh, so you'll see a degree of repetition uh, in the statement that was given in the introduction, so uh, apologies if, if there are things that are really read. <coughs> the application is a resubmission of a previously withdrawn proposal on the same site. This proposal has been amended to reduce the footprint and scale of the building to take into account the proximity and setting of the adjacent Grade 2 listed Pansby Hall. The proposal will provide an extra care, that is, housing with care support, facility for over 55s, which will contrib contribute to the demand for units across the world. There is currently a shortage of units, and the applicant, Magenta Living, in partnership with, with the Council, has a contract with the Homes and Communities Agency to deliver 400 affordable housing units of this type within the world. The site is within a primary residential area where the principle of residential development is acceptable subject to the planning policy cited in the case officer's report. Barncroft currently operates as a care retirement facility and the proposed development seeks to provide an extra care provision of affordable housing units. The site is in the existing garden area of Barncroft and is grassed with trees, mainly located along the perimeter of the eastern boundary. There are a few trees close to the boundary with Pensby Hall and a chain link fence that is relatively open in nature, allowing views to the site of Pensby Hall. There are several trees located to the west of the site, some are in poor health with some self seeded scrub and shrubs. More mature trees are located along the western boundary that contribute to the wooded character of this part of the site. There is a tree preservation order on the site, and as such, the mature trees will be retained. The proposal includes a tree survey which sets out that the trees to be removed will often offer minimal value in, their terms of, in terms of their contribution to the character of the area. Furthermore, the proposal includes a landscaping proposal that shows a retained tree line with additional planting to maintain the new character of the site. An ecology survey has been submitted and, set, and assessed as being acceptable by Mersey Environmental Advisory Service, Merseyside Environmental, Environmental Advisory Service. I understand further conditions are proposed to ensure the protection of protected species. <clears throat> a further bat survey has been undertaken on the 5th of November to reassess the trees for bat roosting. Uh, for 